Meet Arnold. Wow, you're going to a Huntrix concert. Lucky bastard. Let's figure out how we actually perceive sound. The eardrum catches sound waves and vibrates from them. Then three little bones, the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup, transmit the vibrations into the cochlea in the inner ear. There, they're converted into nerve impulses that the brain interprets as sound. Congratulations, you just got beaten up by air. Those are sound waves creating air pressure. That kind of pressure can even knock down entire buildings. From Huntrix to Montserrat Caballet, you're having quite a day. Did you see that? That's resonance. The sound waves matched the vibration of the glass and shattered it. Arnold, I'm ashamed to even know you. Ah, Arnie, once again, you've fallen flat on your face. But at least now, those guys think you're one of them. You don't look like a rock star, though. More like a classmate going through an emo phase. No sound, Arnie. You forgot to plug in the amp. Without it, an electric guitar doesn't make any sound. The amp picks up the string vibrations and turns them into sound waves. It's like autocorrect. It takes your nonsense and turns it into real sentences. Even the Prince of Darkness can't stand your playing. Earplugs are really important. At concerts, the sound reaches 100 to 120 decibels. That's already dangerous for your hearing. Sound. Three. Arnold. Zero. Now I'm going to give you real torture. Sound torture. They used powerful low-frequency sounds that can cause stress, nausea, and even loss of consciousness. These are the most disgusting sounds. Chewing, metal, scraping against glass, or chalk on a blackboard. And topping the list, your voice messages. You think you can escape sound? Arnold, Arnold, Arnold. Arnold. Obviously, you couldn't hear me well underwater. In reality, sound travels faster in water. But evolutionarily, our hearing isn't adapted to recognize sounds underwater. Our brains just can't interpret them properly. Arnold, Arnold, good morning, Arnold. Oh, not again. Get up, doofwad. Bad weather doesn't justify taking a day off. What? You don't want to go to work. Then I suggest you work in bed. When NASA was studying how zero gravity impacts a person, they paid $18,000 to a volunteer to lie in a bed for 70 days. Just don't even think about getting up, Arnie. I hired a sniper who will terminate you at your very first try. You will eat, drink, and do everything else while lying down. See ya, buddy! Hey, did you get any sleep? How are you doing? I guess not so cool. It looks like you're gaining weight. All the energy that comes from the food you eat isn't going anywhere. But bed sores, that's bad. Due to high blood pressure, blood stops flowing to the skin. Hold on, old sport. Good news, Arnold. You're close to the record set by Soviet scientists. 370 days in bed. Yeah, you don't look so hot. Every day, you're losing 5% of your muscle mass. On top of that, your bones are also damaged. And due to your lack of mobility, your bones don't repair and they quickly start deteriorating. And paradoxically, falling asleep lying down becomes impossible. Without a shift in activity, the brain doesn't know what time of day it is or when it's time to sleep. But this does have its perks. You can watch all your favorite shows over and over again. I'll leave you here now. Enjoy the show, Arnold. Oh my god, Arnold! What did you do to yourself? I wasn't serious about the sniper. Hmm, not how I imagined everything. Due to a volcanic eruption, the sky is filled with dense clouds and humanity has found itself without the sun. Interesting. How long 
can you live like this? A billion people suffer from vitamin D deficiency. If the sun disappears, then after seven days, half the population will suffer from acute depression, and there'll be a 75% increase in the risk of getting <gasps> cancer. There'll be a 32% increase in cases of stroke, and it'll become twice as easy to get diabetes. Therefore, better stock up not on canned food, but on vitamins. Without the sun, there's no reason to live on the surface anymore. So everyone moves underground and adapts to this new existence. Nutrition is in the hands of science and technology. Scientists create mushroom and hydroponic farms capable of growing a variety of products. And with a 3D printer, you can quickly print out your favorite dishes. Without sunlight, the human brain can't distinguish between day and night. Your hormones go haywire. And there's a sharp rise in obesity. When the hormone leptin, responsible for appetite, is reduced by 80%, the daily portion of food will increase by almost half, 44%. And this will lead to extra weight. Hey, I'm not sure you can go there. Everything looks like in movies about superheroes. A long corridor, a secret laboratory. And here's the solution. All this turns out to be a global experiment. Who's behind all of this? Come on, Arnold, defeating this strange main villain, you can save the planet. Vitamin D helps in the assimilation of calcium, essential for healthy bones. If it's deficient, your bones become weak and fragile. That's why when you're walking, your feet feel like rubber. And under conditions of complete darkness, your chance of getting a fatal fracture is doubled. Arnold, you're a real hero. You've returned all mankind to a normal life. But knowing your propensity for star fever, this could be dangerous. Let's go back. So, you decided to bulk up, did you? How dare they? Arnold, show them what you're worth. Wow, Arnold, your blood pressure's never been this high before. Be careful. High blood pressure affects the blood vessels in your eyes, which can lead to vision loss. Usually, such vision loss is temporary, probably. Anyway, to get home safely now, you need a guide dog. Guide dogs undergo training that lasts one and a half years, and the cost of a guide dog can reach $20,000. What? A dog is too boring for you. What about a pony? Training a guide pony is easier than training a dog. Plus, it's a great option for people with allergies or for Muslims. Cool hat, Arnold. Being blind, you don't have quite so many leisure options. So put on your headphones and relax. But remember, exposure to sound above 85 decibels damages your hearing. By the way, the volume of headphones is 95 decibels, and a rock concert reaches 115 decibels. The noise of a jet engine reaches 160 decibels, at which eardrums burst, and 180 decibels is lethal. So you're home, Arnold. Um, do you live at the spaceport? No. Well, then be careful. Arnold! I'm sorry, but on top of everything, you've also gone deaf. But don't despair. For communication, people who are both deaf and blind have access to tactile sign language, the Lorna alphabet, or the Braille glove. The glove is a device with contacts made of conductive material. When connected, data is transmitted based on the Braille principle, and vibrational indicators are used to receive the signal. Hey, looks like you've mastered the glove and returned to your workouts. Only instead of the gym, you've walked into the women's locker room, buddy. This is awkward. But hey, at least your vision is returning, even if just for a second. Enjoy your meal, Arnie. Seems like a bad idea, though. Please, don't choke on it. Arnold, it's inconvenient for you to die. I have so many more experiment ideas. But maybe we could transfer your consciousness to a flash drive. I wonder how many gigabytes we'll need. It's hard to believe, but Arnold's brain has a huge memory density. Its capacity is 2.5 million abstract gigabytes. For this, we'll need 2,500 hard drives with a volume of 1. 
one terabyte each. Subscribe and hit like to learn more interesting facts. Poor guy. Don't worry, Arnie. Soon you're gonna be a cyborg. Half robot, half human. Then you won't be afraid of anything. Everyone else will be afraid of you. Hasta la vista, baby. A large part of the brain is occupied by various life processes. Even to fart, millions of neurons are needed. The volume of semantic memory, that is, information in symbols, knowledge about the world, is significantly less than the total volume. For instance, to learn all of English requires only 12 megabytes. Don't worry, Arnold. We managed to transfer all the data from your brain, though it really didn't turn out to be that much. Everything fit onto one flash drive. I even installed a couple of new features. Now, you, Arnold, can solve math problems without a calculator. The precise working memory of the brain can hold between 5 to 9 digits at a time. That's only about 40 bits, or 5 bytes. You can increase working memory by combining different elements. For example, 3, 5, 2, that's 3 elements. But 352, that's 1 element. Arnold, you can start living your usual life again. And now you don't have to worry about stomach pain from eating too much pizza. However, there are a few minor issues now, buddy. Toby doesn't recognize you. Lying on the bed is problematic, and you can't eat regular food. Regular food could cause a short circuit in your new cyber body. Well, you've repeated your mistake again. Today, you're in Area 51, and now you're gonna be teleported. Let me explain how teleportation works. Particles A and B are quantumly entangled. This means they can interact faster than the speed of light. If you scan particle C and its interaction with A, then B can be turned into C. Now, all that remains is to scan the seven octillion atoms in your body and recreate them on the other side of the Earth. Here we go. Phew! It worked! Or maybe not. According to the hypothesis, all neurons on Earth have two possible life cycles. 1% of neurons can transition from one world to another, becoming a mirror neuron. So, Arnie, buddy, you've ended up in a parallel universe. There were no pandemics here. Space technology has developed super quickly and provoked an alien attack. And I thought our 2023 was the worst. Sorry, Arnold. Nothing can save you now. Except for artificial intelligence. Which also decided to take over the world on the sly. Hurry, Arnold! Grab the portal gun! It can take you home! Arnold, no, that's not your universe! Right at the most interesting moment. Now, you'll have to follow the link in the description to find out how all this ends. Well, I'm out of here. What about you? Are you spying on people? You know, it's not so nice to be a peeping Tom, especially so blatantly. I warned you, Arnold. If you stare at the sun, get ready for eye burns, you numbskull. Our eyes are the road on which light-sensitive cells travel. They love the sun, but from a distance. When you look at the sun, you send them straight into a fire. Also, ultraviolet rays damage the proteins in the eye lens, gradually impairing visibility. Look out, Arnie! Oh no, you've fallen into wet concrete and you can't get out of it. So you're gonna have to stare straight at the sun. The longer you look at the sun, the deeper the ultraviolet rays penetrate into your eyes. First, they burn the outer layer, the cornea. Then they damage the proteins in your eye's lens. And then they reach the light-sensitive cells of the retina. So you're not crying anymore, are you, Arnie? That's because there are no more tears left in your eyes. What's that? Could it be a cloud? But today is football day, and the authorities are artificially dispersing all the clouds. But that isn't the worst thing. Ah, you really shouldn't have put those matchsticks in your eyes, buddy. What, you didn't think you'd dream of the sun again? Arnold, you've gone blind! Sun-induced blindness can be central
or peripheral. In special cases, night blindness can occur. That's when a person can't see anything in poor lighting. Let's check your vision. Find the like button and press it. This way we'll know your eyes are okay. Wake up, Arnie! I told you that spying on Berta was a bad idea. And these are the consequences. Well, you could take up bird watching, I think that'd be okay. And you should probably make an appointment with an ophthalmologist, just in case. Otherwise, who knows what kind of trouble you could. Oh no. Well, somehow I kind of guessed this would happen.